Hi! Well, let's finish setting up all the facial actions. First, I'm gonna take care of all the actions related to the mouth. I'm going to establish a limit for the outwards movement of the mouth corner, because currently it moves a little too much. So I'm going to lower the value of the out parameter. That's more or less what I would like the limit of the motion to be. So it's 0.07 in the x-axis. So I'm going to copy that number into the out parameter of the mouth corner L and mouth corner R and also into the out parameter of the mouth control controller. So now I'm going to edit the action called mouth corner out and as I need to edit this action with the mouth corner controller in that position, if I go to frame 1, I will have a double transform of the controllers. So I'm going to put the out toggling 0 in both the L and the R controllers. If you remember last chapter, there I said that the only movement of the mouth corner that was achieved by an action was the inwards movement. So these other movements of the mouth corner are achieved by constraints and the lip moves automatically with the mouth corner. You don't have to edit all the lip controllers like how we edited the inwards movement. Because in this case, you are actually telling how much the mouth corner moves with the limits that we establish in the parameters. So, in these other actions of the mouth corner, I'm going to edit all the surrounding controllers so that the shape of the face keeps looking well. I usually edit this action, as you see, in an extreme position that the character is very unlikely to get to. But, as I said also in the weight painting chapter, if the extreme poses work well, then the intermediate poses will also work. So that's why I set this range of motion a little bit bigger than what the natural pose of the character would be. So now I'm satisfied with how this looks, so I'm going to mirror this pose into the other side, and then I go to frame 0 and I close the action. So then I turn the toggles back on for the outwards movement and as you see the deformation that I set in the action is already working when I move the controller. Then I'm going to edit the backwards movement and the current limit is in 0.45 which I think it's okay but I'm going to edit how the deformation looks. So I turn the toggles of the backwards motion off and I can go to frame 1 and start editing the surrounding controllers. It is a good idea to turn on the deformation bones because that way you can make sure that with the changes you are doing into the controllers you don't flip deformation bones or you don't shrink them too much so you can check that the grid of bones of the facial rig is still looking okay with your changes. So now again I mirror the pose and then I go to frame 0 and I close the action. I turn the toggles back on and I check how the deformation is doing. Now I'm going to see the upwards motion of the mouth corner and the limit is ok, but there are some weird things going on in the action as you see near the cheek, so I'm going to edit the mouth corner up action. I'm going to turn off the up toggles and in this case, if I move between frame 0 and frame 1, I see that I prefer how the rig is behaving without the action. So I'm going to go to frame 1 and I'm going to reset all the transforms of the controllers with ALT, G, S and R. And now that I have a clean action, I'm going to edit it to make it look better. Remember that our main concern here is the movement of the bones, so if there are things in the mesh that you don't like, you will be able to fix that with a shape key or a deformation enhancer modifier later. So now I'm glad with how this is moving, so I'm going to mirror the pose, I'm going to go to frame 0 and I'm going to close the action and I'm going to turn the toggles back on and here we have the new upwards action. Then we have the forwards movement, but to tell you the truth, it is very unlikely that a character will have that kind of motion so I never edit that action. So we finally have the downwards movement. The limit of the downwards movement is alright, 
So I'm going to edit the action, which is mouth corner down. And this time again, I will clean up the action because I don't like how the predefined action is deforming things. So I will reset the transforms in frame one. And I'm going to edit this from a clean action. Remember that when editing these actions, auto keying must always be on. So now I'm okay with this, I'm going to mirror the pose, I'm going to go to frame 0 and I'm going to close the action, I'm going to turn the toggles back on, and now you can see that the mouth corner is behaving pretty well in all of its movements. Next, we have the U vowel action. If we move the mouth control controller, you will notice that the character performs a U action, which is not the same as when you move the mouth corners inwards. As you see, when I move the mouth corners inwards, there is no forward movement of the lips. And that is because this is performed by the U action. This action is actually triggered by these two guys, which are parented to mouth control. As you see, when I move mouth control to the side, and by that I narrow the mouth, these two bones move forwards and that motion is the one that triggers the U action, which is added to the inwards motion of the mouth corner controllers. So these bones can move forwards, and if I take them backwards, you see that the U is cancelled. And if I take them backwards even more, you see that they trigger a motion that can be used as an M consonant. So let's edit this action, which is called z -rig U. I'm going to turn off the U toggle, in this case. And as you can see, this action has three frames. Frame 1 is the U, frame 0 is the neutral pose, and frame minus 1 is the M. So in this case, I'm also going to reset all the transforms in frame 1 to edit the action from a clean stand. And for editing this action, I'm also going to enable the layer called Facial 2, because there are some controllers involved in this action that are in the layer Facial 2. And then, while still being in frame 1, I'm going to take the mouth control controller into the U position, and then I'm going to move the controller called Leap Up Control Collision forwards, and then I'm going to move Leap Up 2 Control backwards in order to give the lip that kind of U vowel shape. I'm going to do the same with the lower lip controller, so I'm going to move Leap Low Control Collision forwards, and then Leap Low 2 Control backwards. I'm also going to tweak a bit the shape of the lip in general. So now I can mirror the pose and I'm going to go to frame minus one to edit the M action. And then with the same controllers with which I edited the U vowel, I'm going to take the lips into an M position. I will probably fix that gap between the lips with a shape key later. So now I will mirror the pose and I will go to frame 0 and close the action. Then I can toggle the U action on again and you can see how this movement behaves now. The only thing missing now in order to finish with the lips is to define the automated curvature that the lips will have when the mouth corner moves. So for doing that we can close the facial movement ranges and the action toggles and we can open the lip shaping tab. So with these parameters in lip shaping we can define how much the intermediate lip controllers follow the movement of the mouth corner in X, Y and Z. So, in this case, I believe that the controllers Leap Up and Low Control 3 should move a little bit less in the Z-axis to have a nicer curvature. So, in the Leap Shaping tab, you can see that we first have the left controllers, the upper and lower controllers. So, we go from the center of the mouth to the mouth corner. That is Leap Up Control 1 and Leap Low Control 1, then Up 2, Low 2, 
up free and low free and the same for the right side so in this case the lip up and low control three bones are following the mouth corner in the z-axis in 70 percent so i'm going to lower that value to 50 but well maybe 50 is too much so i'm going to put it in 60 and 60 is okay so i like how the curvature looks there so then I'm going to copy this value into the parameters of the right controllers. And that's it. You see how the new curvature of the lips is working. Well, now I'm going to check some of the secondary actions that are still pending. I'm going to check the one called mouth frown. I use this action when the character has a kind of worried expression or when it tensions the neck so I'm going to edit this action because it is not moving enough here in this case the frame 0 is the neutral pose and the maximum value of the expression is achieved at frame 2 there are only a few controllers assigned to this section which are mouth corner L and R the chin controller lip low 2 control and the lip low control collision controller so I'm going to edit the action with these controllers and then I'm going to go to frame 0 and I'm going to close the action so this is the mouth frown expression oh and one parameter I forgot to mention is the auto smile parameter in the cheek controllers so with this parameter on the cheek automatically moves when the mouth corner moves up so you can get a kind of organic smile on the character if you put that value in zero you won't get any automated cheek movement so as well as with the eyelids I prefer to leave this option with an automated value then the other action we are missing is the nose frown action so you can see what the nose frown actions do and I'm going to edit the action called nose frown Now I'm going to mirror the pose and I'm going to go to frame 0 and close the action. So with this action we finish with the movement ranges parameters and all the main mechanics of the face are defined. So now I'm going to just check a couple of super extra secondary actions that we have which are cheeks frown. This action is intended for exaggerating the upwards movement of the cheek. So when the cheek is totally up if you scale the cheek controller you kind of get a frown expression over the cheek and also over the eye and the eyebrows so that is what this action does in frame 1 so this action is just a detail that you can use to enhance a smile for example and as well as with the cheeks the nose frown controller also has this exaggerating action which is nose frown max so now i mirror the pose i go to frame zero and i close the action and here you can see the nose frown max in action along with the cheek frown action well it seems I forgot about a last action for the mouth which is called maxi up down and this action is for correcting the shape of the rig when the jaw goes totally up and when the mouth opens so in facial movement ranges we have the jaw up and jaw down parameters so now the upper limit of the jaw rotation which is jaw up is now in 20 degrees so you see that the movement stops there but I'm going to higher that value a bit and after hiring the value I'm going to edit the action and for that I'm going to turn off the jaw up down toggle 
frame one of this action is the upwards motion so here I'm going to move the teeth up a bit with the controllers called mouth master up and low I can change how the lips behave in this position and also with lip up free control I'm going to move the upper lip a little bit backwards right there next to the nose so with this we have an automated movement to kind of fix the rig pose when the jaw rotates up if it is necessary so then we have the jaw down movement which is the frame minus one and in the movement ranges parameters the value of this motion is 30 degrees so this means that when the jaw rotates down 30 degrees the action will be in its maximum expression so with this motion I basically try to relax a bit the shape of the lips when the jaw opens so I just smooth out a bit the curve of the lips and of the mouth corner and that's it so I will mirror the pose and I will go to frame zero and close the action and then I will enable again the jaw up down toggle and that's it well let me now finish with the parameters we have the smile parameter which defines how much the mouth corners move when you rotate the mouth control so if you change this value the mouth corners will move less or more depending on the value that you put then we have the jaw rotation parameter which determines how much the jaw rotates when you move the mouth control bone up or down this is mainly a visual thing and I always try to put a value in which the lips match the vertical movement of the mouth control controller here I'm going to change the value to make them match a bit better so I'm going to lower the value so finally and I promise this is the last one we have the auto back parameter and this parameter determines how much the mouth corner controllers move backwards when you move the mouth control controller outwards that is when you move the mouth control controller outwards the mouth corners also move outwards but if you think of a realistic motion the mouth corners always move a little bit back when they move out so this value defines how much the mouth corners move back when they also move out this only takes place when you move the mouth corners by moving the mouth control controller so now I think I'll put this in 120 so yes that's it well at last we have finished with the mechanics of the face we are getting closer and closer to finishing this character so I'll see you in the next chapter.